What does scoliosis affect? Scoliosis is an unnatural sideways curvature that also rotates, making it a three-dimensional condition. Scoliosis induces a lot of uneven forces to the body, and scoliosis definitely affects the spine, but it can affect the surrounding muscles, nerves, tissues, and eventually can affect the entire body. Scoliosis can affect all ages. It can affect babies that are born with scoliosis. It can affect children between six months and two years of age, which is called infantile scoliosis. It can affect juvenile scoliosis between three and 10 years of age. It can be adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, which is one of the most common types of scoliosis, which is diagnosed between 10 and 18 years of age. And of course, there's adult scoliosis, and this is patients that are diagnosed with that over the age of 18. Now, the most prevalent type of scoliosis is adolescent idiopathic scoliosis scoliosis because this is the most common time of diagnosis. So most adolescent cases may have had scoliosis in the juvenile range, but they didn't get diagnosed at the time. So the number one classification what we just mentioned there was at the time of diagnosis. So if somebody has an adolescent scoliosis, but they didn't know they had it and they weren't diagnosed until the adult form, it would be called adult scoliosis. Now the main effect in children when it comes to scoliosis is postural deviation. Normally what we see is this asymmetrical torso shape. Because scoliosis affects the overall body symmetry, the most common thing tends to be an uneven shoulder, uneven hips, uneven waist. However, there can be additional postural deviations, including development of a rib arch. Arms appear to hang at different lengths. Um, it can be a leg imbalance or pelvic imbalance. The changes to balance and coordination and gait can also be common, but this is normally an effect of the postural misalignment leading to asymmetrical torso symmetry. This is by far the most common thing we see in children. Children do not experience a lot of pain or discomfort or functional problems as a result of scoliosis. This doesn't start to occur until the adult stage. And this is where the main symptom of scoliosis in adults tends to be pain. And this is because scoliosis in the adult form becomes compressive because what causes progression in the adult form is gravity over time. And in children, what causes pro progression is rapid growth and development. Since they're growing, there's no compression, they feel no pain. However, in the adult form, gravity's compressing so it can lead to pain. This compression of the spine, and it can affect not only the spine, but it can also affect the surrounding muscles, nerves, and tissues, and this is what would cause a scoliosis-related pain. Again, adults can also experience postural changes, but by far, the number one symptom that brings on a diagnosis in the adult form is gonna be pain. Now, we know there is different severities associated with scoliosis, and scoliosis ranges from, uh, widely in, sev in severity from mild, moderate to severe to very severe. And the more severe the condition, the more naturally curved the spine is and also rotated and twisted, and this is where the effects tend to be more noticeable, whether it tends to be pain or posture. And the effects of untreated scoliosis typically tends to worsen over time. And it can worsen rapidly as an adolescent, but it can worsen slowly slowly in the adult form and lead to more rapid progression in later stage life. And as the scoliosis worsens, the spine tends to become more rigid, which tends to becomes more difficult to actually treat the scoliosis, but it tends to affect the, the body and the patient more often, or more likely to affect them more severely. And if it's left untreated, it can become very severe and start affecting digestive issues, start causing things like migraines or lung impairment, respiratory malfunction, digestive of disorders, it can lead to lots of different effects without the body because since the entire skeletal system is being affected and the spinal cord and the nerve system is being affected, it can have a wide range of effects. So the best way to minimize the effects of scoliosis is to treat it proactively. We know it's more effective to proactively treat scoliosis the sooner we find it. And the sooner we treat it before scoliosis progresses and causes increasing effects to the body, the more likely we are to get a better result. So attempting to deal with the scoliosis as opposed to reversing it once these condition effects have become significant is by far the better approach. We are definitely pro-treating scoliosis early as opposed to treating it later after it's worsened. 
it's more effective to proactively treat scoliosis than trying to reverse scoliosis after the condition effects have become more significant. Meaning the bigger the, the curve, the more significant the effects have become, the harder it is to treat it. So we recommend treating it before these effects have become established because you're more likely to have a positive result. So we're definitely pro early treatment as opposed to waiting and seeing what happens. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.